Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to continue on with my Brewdog catch up that I've been doing for you and I'm really quite excited for this beer. A lot of people have told me that this is one of the best beers that Brewdog have produced in quite a wee while. A lot of the other ones I've reviewed for you have been very very solid but people have told me that I really really need to do this one so I'm very interested to see what this guy is all about. So today we're going to have a taste of the beer called Hinterland and this one is an Imperial oatmeal milk stout with vanilla and cocoa added to it. I was convinced before I did the video that I was going to say that wrong but apparently this beer is very very good. It's rated at 99 on Rate Beer and as I always say that website is a very good barometer of your craft beer. It's, you never, If you've got a rating of 99 on there you're not going to get a bad beer at all from this. It's going to be pretty damn awesome. So anyway as is usual with my beer reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery. If you do want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward. All the usual websites sites are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other Brewdog reviews. There's about 60 or 70 of those now, so do check those out if you're particularly interested in Brewdog beer. And there's all the usual social media things, Facebook, Twitter and Untapped. Please support me on there. It would be much appreciated. And if you want to see more Brewdog reviews as well as many other things, please subscribe to the channel and don't be scared to, to leave me some suggestions and I will try my best to get a hold of the beer that you guys want to see. So anyway, to tell you about Brewdog quickly, as I've told you many a time, Brewdog is the love child of James Watt and Martin Dickey and they were founded back in 2007 at a small brewery in the Keswick Industrial Estate in Fraserburgh in the very northeast corner of Scotland right on the tip of the monster's nose but more recently they've moved their main brewing operations to their new and very shiny purpose built facility in Ellen which is closer to the city of Aberdeen where I used to study and of course they are looking to open up a second brewery over in Columbus Ohio in the United States but they're known for being a very experimental brewery and particularly for their strong beers as well they held the title of world's strongest beer on three separate occasions but they've bowed out of that race now but they're largely inspired by the American craft brewing renaissance. They quite often cite stone brewing company as their main influence and they do say that their trademark styles are pale ales, IPAs and double IPAs and they produce some really good beers in that style but I'd also argue that they excel when it comes to stouts. I mean Riptide is really nice, that's one of my favourite stouts and they also the Paradox series is very good as well. You really need to try that one. But these days these guys have got several brew pubs throughout the UK. The first of these started in Aberdeen back in 2009. I was there on the first night that it opened but they've spread all throughout the rest of the UK since then. They've got several international sites now. Japan, Brazil, uh, Finland, Sweden, Norway I think as well. They've got a new one in Berlin soon, some in Italy, France. They're all over the place so there's many opportunities for you to try Brewdog beer at their actual bars so do go and check them out. And one thing that's also interesting about this brewery is that they're the largest independent owned brewery in Scotland and they're still expanding and this is largely due to their equity for punk scheme and this is where fans of the brewery like you and I can buy into the brewery and in exchange for buying the shares you get a lifetime discount in the bars and in the shops but this is what they use to fund a lot of their infrastructure development such as this new brewery that they opened in, uh, in Ellen and also the new one that's coming in America as well and I think they use it for a lot of their bars too so it's quite an interesting business model and very recently they've released a book on that too so you can go and read about that probably very interesting to those of you who are studying business or are involved in the business world. But anyway, that's your little bit about Brewdog. As I say, if you want to read more, go and check out the brewery website. They've got their core range of beers, which is really nice. They've also got the Amplified series, which are my personal favourites. Those are the higher ABV things, but they've got several other one-offs. Kind of, This is one of the small batch brews that they do, and they've got several regular series. IPA is Dead, Paradox, Hello My Name Is, Abstract. They do a whole host of different things, so do follow them on the social media, and you will get an idea of all the different things going on at Brewdog. But anyway, let's actually get on to the tasting of this beer. So this one, like I told you at the start of the video, is a 9% Imperial Stout and it's described as being an Imperial Oatmeal Milk Stout with Vanilla Pods and Cocoa. And the nice artwork you can see on this is from Johanna Black Bassford apparently. And this is meant to be a jackalope, which is a mythical North American creature. And it's basically a jackrabbit with antelope horns on it. And I have to admit, it's very cool. I'm pretty certain I'm going to keep this bottle but just to read you the blurb that's on this one here it says walk with us through the ink black velvet portal journey to the place where secrets live and darkness holds court the land of Hinter where jackalopes and raven black rivers run free draw up your glass from the depths of the ebbing flow let the rich dark chocolatey aroma seduce you and drink be enve enveloped by the sugar candy roasted malty warmth fall into the liquid black pools of jackalope's eyes then clarity the hinterland comes sharply into focus lose yourself in the black 
roam this inky kingdom until the darkness melts and your world slowly reappears. The Jackalope King will return, darkness will reign once more. So yeah, this one is going to be pretty awesome. As I said, rated at 99 on Rate Beer. And I have to give a thank you to the guys at Fountain Hall Wines and Spirits once again for keeping these beers for me while I'm away living in Sweden. So I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork on this one. You can see it's quite nicely done. I think Johanna Basford might have been the one who did the, I forget what the beer was called, Mixtape 8. I think she might have been the one who designed the artwork for that one as well. You can see it's got one of the normal Brewdog bottle caps on it, but this is very nice. Again, I've still got my bottle for Mixtape 8. That's one of the best Brewdog beers I've reviewed for you, incidentally. So if you do, for some, for some reason, find that beer, you have to try that one. But this one it should be pretty awesome as well. So without further ado, let's get this guy open and we'll get on with the tasting here. Really looking forward to this. And as I said, one of the styles, Brewdog always trademarked themselves as being mainly an IPA, pale ale and sort of double IPA brewery. But I have to admit, I think Brewdog really excel when, uh, when they're producing some of these Imperial Stout beers. I might even go as far to say as that I personally think Brewdog are better at stouts than they are at IPAs. But that might be a bit of a wild claim, but the stout beers, I've never had a bad stout from Brewdog. So I might be tempted to stick with that and they produce some really good double IPAs as well. The Hello My Name Is series when they were doing Imperials for that was always really awesome. So as you can see this beer has poured a very nice dark rosewoody chestnut colour. So maybe even ebony is a good way to describe this one. There's a half finger of a very kind of beigey tan head there. It's maybe even wood brown actually but it looks very very nice. Deep brown head. There's some big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass. Not too many but quite a few little ones just going up towards the bottom of the head and as you could see from the pour this was a very very syrupy beer so this one should be pretty awesome. No visible sediment in this so it should be pretty good and it said it went out of date in 2020 so if you get this beer you can age it for quite a considerable time. So let's give this guy a smell and see how we get on here. Oh yeah. The Brewdog Stouts always have this really quite complex sweetness to them. You have to shoot, when you don't sugar them up, they always smell very mild. So you really need to shake these beers up a little bit to get all the different things out of it. So you've got a nice sweet chocolatey malt to this one. It's quite roasted as well. You can pick up that kind of roasted base that just underpins this beer. But there's a hell of a lot of nice brown sugar in here. You know, there's some typical sweet caramel, but there's a bit. I'm getting more of the dark treacle or sort of molasses as they would call it over in America. There's definitely some sweet chocolate in there. And the vanilla is really coming out of this one. They've added vanilla pods to this. And you can really smell that in there. The nice vanilla sweetness mixes quite well with the chocolate. It's almost like a cakey aroma that comes out of this actually. And there's definitely a sort of woody, nutty character comes out of this. But the vanilla, of course, is going to be very prominent because they've actually added vanilla pods to the brew. But the, the nutty and woody infusions in this are very interesting. But the vanilla for me is really sticking out. There is a little bit of a, a red fruity ester too. It comes across, across as quite a candied or maybe slightly figgy character. But I'd say it's more of a candied sort of Haribo, sort of Haribo love heart uh, kind of red candied fruit ester that you're getting off this one. But it smells very, very nice. And this is going to come out a bit more as it heats up. I'm serving this one at maybe about 8, 9 degrees, which I think is what you're supposed to do with an Imperial Stout. You can serve them a little bit higher than that. But as the temperature increase, increases, of course, you're going to get more of the malty character coming out. But... It smells very, very nice. So let's get stuck into this beer then. This is the Hinterland from Brewdog, an Imperial Stout, Imperial Oatmeal Milk Stout with vanilla pods and cocoa added to the brew. So this should be pretty awesome. Slanja. And I'm actually filming this review on Christmas Day, so a bit late, but Merry Christmas once again. Doesn't disappoint, certainly that. This beer is very, very complex though, so as I always say, sugar it around your mouth a little bit and let the whole palate adjust to this one. Yeah, that is very, very good. 
it actually takes a little bit a little while to build to be honest so just take a few sips of it before you actually try and dissect the flavor too much yeah that is really nice for me the middle of the palette is just blanketed with this nice kind of brown bready character that just goes right across the middle of your tongue it's actually quite light but there is a bit more body to it as the flavor kind of builds and progresses into the aftertaste but of course you've got that nice almost rye breadish character that just builds on the bottom of the palate and on top of that it actually gets a bit more roasty there is an element of a roasted character to this but the sweetness really overpowers that I think the sweetness is one of the main things coming out of this beer There's a lot of nice brown sugars in there. A little bit toasty, but more sweet, I would say. It's got a bit of the treacle and a bit of the molasses, or even though it's the same thing, a little bit of the sweeter caramel and the treacle molasses, I should say. But the chocolate is quite mild for me. The vanilla really kind of overpowers the chocolate, I think. But that's nice. I have to admit, I really do love vanilla flavor. For, so for me, this kind of hits the nail right on the head. It's really nice. Yeah, there's definitely a kind of woody and nutty infusion to this one as well. You can actually pick it up more as the beer progresses into the aftertaste. Some of the, 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 the vanilla really lingers there, and that's where these nice woody and nutty flavours are coming out as well. It almost tastes as if it's barrel aged, but I don't think it is. Yeah, but of course, when they've added vanilla to the brew, you are going to get a lot of that in the beer obviously but I have to admit I really do like vanilla stouts and this one for me is beautiful I can see why it's got 99 it was rated about 80 within the style so it's obviously what I always find if you have a beer that's rated at 99 overall and then 80 within the style that tells you that it's going to be very nice but at the same time it's quite quirky so it's quite interesting to think about little things like that but for me the vanilla is very prominent and it mixes for it's mixing really nicely with the chocolate I think so you're almost getting a vanilla chocolatey character from this one there's a very smooth coffee flavor in there that dark cocoa just at the back of the tongue you can feel a little bit of the the roasted and slightly dry character from the the coffee coming out there and that is really nice. That's the very dark cocoa that they've added to the beer coming out of this one. But yeah, this is a beautiful, beautiful beer. It's got everything you would expect. Nice little bit of almost rye breadish character. On top of that, there's some sweet chocolate. There's a lot of vanilla in there, and those two are mixing together. There's a bit of the brown sugar, quite sweet caramel, but at the same time, there's some darker, slightly toasted molasses and treacle coming out of this one but there's a very nice earthy character in the back corner of the palate too and you get the dark cocoa quite roasted at the back of the tongue that just comes out as the beer progresses into the aftertaste. It's quite roasted and it blends together quite well with these earthy, these dry earthy hops in the back corner of the palate but as you come further forward the beer is very smooth and the hoppiness only really comes out in the aftertaste I would say. When you have the liquid in your tongue and you're, it takes a while for these earthy characters to come out I should say. The woody and nutty flavours come out a little bit later as well. As the tongue starts to dry up a little bit, you can really pick those out. There is maybe a little bit of a red fruity ester in there, but again, that's very mild. This beer is all about the vanilla and all about the chocolate for me. Yeah. No, there is a little bit of a maybe slightly figgy character in there. It's not quite plums or raisins. It's not quite sharp enough for that. But there is maybe a slightly figgy character just behind the very front curve of the tongue. You get that little oily bubble and you're getting these sort of candied red fruits and probably figgy flavours in there too. But overall, this is another very good beer and it gives me even more reason to say that Brewdog really excel when it comes to Imperial Stouts. I personally think that their, their Imperial Stouts are maybe better than their IPAs. That's not to say that their IPAs are bad by any means, but I have to admit the Imperial Stouts hit me a lot more and kind of strike me a lot more than some of the IPAs do, but it's another very, very good beer from Brewdog, and I can see why people have said this is the best one they've produced in quite some time. I'd be inclined to agree with them. 
In terms of the mouthfeel of this one, this one's mid to full bodied, it's got quite a smooth carbonation, big oily mouthfeel on this one, it is quite syrupy and you can see that from the pour, there's a nice kind of roasted malt underpinning to this but overall it's quite sweet, the chocolate and vanilla give it a lot of nice sweetness and there's a good bit of earthy hop dryness in there and that builds as you move into the aftertaste, it's got quite a bit of alcohol warmth too and you only start to feel that after you've taken a few sips of it but overall this is another beer, another beautiful beer from Brewdog. This is one of their best ones that they've released. I'm happy to go along with what people have told me on this, just on the basis of the taste. This is a really awesome beer from Brewdog. This is one of the best ones they've brewed in quite a wee while, actually. So if you get the chance to try this one, you really have to do it. Their other beers are all very good, but this one, for me, rises above the rest. This is a really awesome beer. So this is the Hinterland from Brewdog. You need to go and try this. So I hope you've enjoyed this beer review. Do let me know what your own thoughts on this beer if you have tried it before. Always interesting to hear from you guys. And let me know where you're trying this beer as well actually. I'd be interested to know how far and wide they're actually exporting the small batch series. This is part of their small batch series. So do let me know that. But I thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next one, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Go and check out my social media things. I thank you once again for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this review. Go and check out Brewdog and all their websites and everything like that. They produce some very good beer, particularly stouts. So do check those out but until the next beer review i'll catch you soon and go and enjoy some of the brew dog beers slange it and have a nice christmas even though it's a bit later that you'll see this review cheers